Right, once again we are in the porterhouse with Brian. And today we're going to talk about our favourite subject, which is beer. beer. And we're also going to talk about what you should do with your second child. What do we have here? The 48th chapter of the Rule of St. Benedict states, well, If they live by the work, for then are they monks in truth, but if they live by the works of their hands. Benedictine monks, who have taken an order of poverty, become Trappist monks and they brew beer to pay for their brewery and for their lifestyle and for everything that they have and all that they have. They don't, they don't accept money, they don't have any money of their own, so they brew beer. There are several, I think there's 11 officially recognised Trappist breweries. 11? 11. Oh, okay. I always um, thought it was more than that, but that's, that's really cool. You've got the ones, the, the common enough ones, for example, and common is not the correct word here. Yeah, you've got Rochefort, or Val, Vestvelectrin, Chimay, there's a, there's a whole Gansey load of them. And they make beer primarily. And the thing with making beer is, these people have very little to do with their time. They don't do a lot of stuff. They pray, you know. They, um, they obviously sleep, they eat. They spend the majority of their time um, doing good works for the local community. They give all of the money that they, they make from the produce of this amazing product. It goes to charities in and around their local area. Oh, wow. Some of these people have been so, making... Hold, hold on a second. So you're saying that by drinking this beer, we're are contributing to charity? Yes. We're saving the world. Listen to that's, that, people. That's a responsibility. Plus, it is an expression of beer making. That, um, it's so far away. We mentioned it last time about your mass-produced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is so far away from that. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's the other side of the spectrum. The dedication and care gone into... Well, hang on a second, Jake. <laughs> the dedication and care that's gone into producing these particular products. Some of, the, uh, some of the, the, the monks would use phrases like liquid bread and that kind of stuff. The head on that's only gorgeous, isn't it? Uh, it looks good, doesn't it? It's a, it's a, a dark copper, dark... Oh. Okay, um, what I learned from my, our last session, that we only have two types of beer. We yes. have the lagers and we have the ales. So which, one, which category would this fall into? Uh, ale. This would be an ale. Entirely. You'll notice this is the Rochefort 10. There's also the 8 and the 6. And these um, numbers would donate the style of beer mainly. The 10 being there. The one that the guy at the head table would drink. And the 8 would be the, the rest of the people around. And the 6 would be the people that work in the place or. Not the lowest quality beer by any means, but it's a slightly lesser and then the eight and then this. So the other breweries will use different numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They will use the names, be it the prior or the abbot or the pater, depending on. This particular beer uh, weighs in at a rather hefty 11.3%. Good to be working. <laughs> Isn't it just on the clock? This is what I like. Oh, wow. That's a. Uh... You, you can kind of do smell a little bit of the alcohol with this one. Like it. You can. It's, well, it's tricky to hide such an amount. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But if there's anybody can. I mean, this is... No, it's not intrusive in any way. It's not like it, it's... Uh... Far from it. It's just that when you take a sniff, it penetrates a little bit further than it would on a, on a lighter beer. Mm. The depth of flavour there is ridiculous. Oh my lord. It just keeps on 
back, isn't it? Isn't it? it keeps on giving from the fr first sip to 10 seconds after you're swallowing it, you're getting different flavor profiles. Okay. Let me be ig ignorant here and uh, you can educate me. What's that? You know the aftertaste that it's like it's almost like the taste of the yeast that kind of keeps on going. Is there is there some terminology to go with that? <laughs> or we can look with our own. The, the <laughs> we can make it up if you want. Yeah, exactly. You will get um, the yeast. The, there's going to be a yeasty flavour from it. A lot of the these brewers will be using the same yeast for centuries before they even knew what yeast was. Yeah. And many of the Trappist breweries will have the the yeast will use be very specific type of yeast. Very, if you will, a lot of Belgian beers will have a very similar flavour, but it's more than the yeast. There's also any amount of herbs and/or spices, if you will. Everything from uh, some would use cardamom, anise, uh, coriander will be in some of them. The list goes on. Anything that can impart flavour to a beer, anything that can impart flavour to anything, they'll use it in the beers, and they'll get that flavour. And that would be their flavour. Their flavour. But that it, that's um, actually that's actually a good good thing to um, we'll just put it in here for the for the next one. That uh, um, the fact that we've done it, the second Belgian one, and and that they have a very kind of uh, particular kind of um, the process is is the flavour process can be can be a little bit more complex than maybe in some other areas of beer beer production. Yes, very so, much so. So I think next time we could actually really good look at some Bavarian. Uh, That's beer. what I was going to yeah, yeah, do a German beer. Yeah, some, something because of their regulations then as well next time. But their regulations are more or less gone, I think they're mere suggestions, but I think it's a sense of pride that they still do. Oh, it is, the, yeah, the yeah, 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 especially, especially in Bavaria. Like. And yeah. because of that, a lot of German beers will taste the same. Yeah. It also could be said, you could do a blind taste test and that's a Belgian beer. Oh yeah, you know. There's um, especially when you get the more uh, loaded, flavor-filled beers. It's definitely uh, certain elements of the taste that you, you definitely know that you're in Belgium. Oh, very much. And you could you could spend you could spend some time. Um, you could do a lot worse uh, than drinking. Excuse me. There's a lot of carbonation as well in these beers. You could do a lot worse than drinking this beer slowly if you're a brewer yourself. And trying to work out the flavours, or the do with a lot of them. Uh, take Hogarden, orange, and um, orange and coriander. You're going to get a lot of Germans who use coriander and orange rind or lemon rind. Um, some of them will use a specific yeast which gives a banana flavour. Some of the German ones will have a banana and clove flavour, and yet there's no banana ever going near the beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's I find that really interesting when they, they can actually do that with. Uh, with just the yeast, because oh, no. at the end of the day, if you see the the, the the amount that actually goes into the whole production is actually so small. But well, yeah, but it propagates in the beer. Yeah, exactly. The, the, you know? How much it, it adds to the flavor is just it's just unbelievable. It's amazing. It's a great thing. Beer is the simplest thing in the world, as we've already touched on. Yeah, yeah. It's and yet the depth of flavor, the broad the range of different kind of products that can that could be considered beer. There's always one reading about one this afternoon that they drink in Tibet. Which is um, it's rice based. It's completely white, um, and you drink it piping hot to a bamboo stock. We have to get our hands on that. <laughs> Where do we get that? Where do we? I don't know if her beer suppliers could get that in, but uh, that'd be one I'd like to try. Um, look, if that's what it takes. Maybe we have to uh, go for a visit. To bed, <laughs> right? I'll book a day off. <laughs> We shall have a trip to Tibet. You're more than welcome to come with us. Uh, if anybody wants to pay for that, Richard Branson, if you're out there, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that'll be great. Um, <laughs> this is definitely much sweeter than the one we had last time. Um, Again, it is quite sweet. That'll be a lot to do with the the fact that it's twelve percent alcohol, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, of course. Um, like some of the stronger, stronger beers, it's just the alcohol. Um, but of course, with a beer like this, it's not just the alcohol, you know. No, no, that is. It's. Um, like you could you could be easily be fooled that it's a lot less alcohol than what it is because yeah, of the flavour. Right? Yeah, you, you'd still say it's quite strong. Twelve percent, perhaps you mightn't. You can see the bottom of that as well. What's coming out of there is uh, 
And if you can get that up to the dark, that's all. The... You could actually take what's in the bottom of that bottle and you could bring it home and you could probably cultivate another yeast strain from it and brew this, brew a similar beer at home. But that's probably what they would have done in the past. That's exactly what they would have yeah, done yeah. with the Trappist, what they would have had. It's these people will also make breads and cheese. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a long tradition of making a rye bread in Finland where uh, you always, when you make the rye bread, you keep a little bit of it as the root for the next one. You know? you, that's, that's your starter yeast? Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of the lambic beers that we mentioned last week will use the same principle. Yeah. They, before they knew what, because these people have been making beer since before uh, Louis Pasteur discovered yeast, before we even knew what it was, and they would have what they'd call the magic stick. So they'd stir the dough, they'd make them their bread with it, not knowing, but this would be the stick. They would, this would be the stick that they would use, and then they would do that, and then they would take it away off, and they would go to the, the mash and the beer, and they would stir that round and add the water into the grain, and then lo. As if, as if by some kind of magic, the beer would brew. And no one understood it for centuries, but of course, science got involved and <laughs> answered all the questions, which is what science does so beautifully. That's great, that's brilliant, that's brilliant, that's brilliant. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing. Unfortunately, the world being what it is, many of these breweries are. Um, because essentially they're all brewed by people in the order and if no one joins the order the people in the order get older and then of course what happens is they die and then they're no longer Trappists. There will not be any Trappist breweries in 20 years time because no one is joining the orders. Um, I read an article, I think it was the Vestvalex room, so the smaller really, it's quite a famous brewery because it's small and rare and whatnot but their youngest brewer is in his 70s and when they go that's the end of it. Yeah, we were talking about that this before. This might be something that we're going to look into. He was actually trying to visit some of those places before <coughs> they've gone. Um, That's it. A few years ago, Vestvaletren released um, the same style, their top end beer. They released four of them in a wee pack. And it was going for 40, 50 euros. But it had two little small chalice glasses. Lovely little things. Um, the unreleased, I think. A couple of hundred cases of these four boxes and the moment they were available to the public on certain internet sites the prices of them started going up and up and up and um, even the little glass it was only a little glass and um, they were on the market for 50 60 70 dollars the day after the uh, they came out available but just because people realize what they were if you have a dark like a shed out your back or anywhere dark that's not warm in your house, you buy a beer like this, you could lay this down for some time. Um, it won't get, it, uh, it, some of them will improve with age because there is still the yeast in them. Yeah. You know, I have several beers at home in my, uh, in my little apartment. Secret, that secret, secret uh, Yeah, that I'm keeping stash. for a while. Yeah, I know many people do that. Yeah. Um, and we were talking about this earlier on. Uh, it's it's absolutely dreadful day here in Dublin. The um, there's, there's there's rain is going sideways and there's there's a couple of grannies flying by the window. Yes, yes, traditional um, Irish weather. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the winter is here and this is this is really uh, this is actually pretty close to what I meant by saying that a uh, winter like, warm win, winter beer. But this is like something that you could really. Uh, That's a sipper. Yeah, That's I, I, I don't sip. think you'd be going, going for this on a hot summer day. Do you know what I mean? Nah, it'd you be too much, too much. But you'd struggle to swallow. Like, this this kind of weather, it's just. Perfect. It's just this beer doesn't need to be cold. Room temperature, fine. Brings out more of the flavours that'll be hidden away in it. Really? Oh, entirely. Mm. Frankly, I wouldn't have most of the beers we have downstairs in our fridges, which I don't know if you've seen it on this one or the last video. We've a good selection of yeah, beers. Said... There's a lot of gaps in it. We've normally have a lot more, but frankly, I think that those fridges are too cold. A lot of these beers were stored between four and eight degrees. A beer like this, if you're gonna if you're gonna drink it at home. Um, don't store it in the fridge and if you're going to drink it at 8 o'clock you open it at about 7 o'clock oh, wow. and then you sit there yeah. Not you don't let it breathe like a red wine or any of that kind of silliness but you don't drink it super cold you don't take it out of the fridge pop it and fire it in a glass and horse it into you it's not the way you drink a beer like this right that's, that's uh, an utter waste let's talk a little bit more about the flavours oh where do you start what's going on here I mean, you could spend you could spend 20, 15 minutes discussing the flavour profiles, and you will end up coming out with nuts, raisins. Uh, I can sense raisins. Yeah, as yeah. soon as you said raisins, raisin, 
lemon rind, uh, anise. God, Bennett. If I knew, if I knew where all the flavours were in this, I'd be, a, I'd be a better man than I am. If I could tell you the herbs as well, but a lot of the, the flavours won't come from. Look, I doubt very much there's raisins in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh... It comes through in the malting process, I would imagine. I don't know, but it's just a wonderful, wonderful product. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's like somebody's pure age, your favourite, your favourite granny's Christmas cake, into a into a glass. There, there's an element of Christmas cake, and it is all right. A bit more adult tasting. An adult Christmas, Christmas cake, cake, yes. And, Not only uh, my granny's made a Christmas cake that had a bit of bottle of brandy in it once, and bloody no, that is you, you can burn that. Have you cooked it? Hang on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's cooking now. Um, also, I, I can feel it. It does, it does kind of warm you up a little bit on the inside as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lovely, strong, delicious beer. It's an absolutely marvelous product. A lot of them, all of the, uh, all of these Belgian beers, the Trappist beers, they're all very, very good. If you happen to get your hands on, there's one called Orval. It's a small. It's a slightly different shape, kind of a pinkish colouring to the bottle. Um, and that uses the same yeast as the Lambic beers that we discussed last week with the same care and attention to detail that's gone into this style and that's a whole different, different thing altogether. The flavours in there are candies and again it's sweet but there's a lovely, it feels sour but it doesn't taste sour. Again that's another great product. Um, you should write down this we go for a list. <laughs> Good, 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 good. That's another great one. Tougher to get. Again, the the production, they're getting less and less of these, but worth it. It's something you take your time with. You don't fire this into. Long day, lock the wife outside, and dog sleep on your feet. You know, best drank in the dark. That's what we say a bit about this. Beside a fireplace. Beside a fireplace. Yeah, yeah, with the dog asleep at your feet. Mrs. cooking the dinner. Kids asleep in the garage. Locked up, chained in their little box. <laughs> I think there's laws against that. Did we not change all them laws, no? They actually do that in Russia. Well, they, they've just legalised beating the wife. Yeah, they did, yeah. In Russia. As long as nobody gets hurt, and you only do it once or twice a year, <laughs> I think we just stick to re re we'll stick beers. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll leave social commentary. I, but I, know, I, I think, I think, uh, no, no. I mean, I mean, as a, as a, I think we make a better world out of it by not trying to change the laws. Let's, let's uh, drink more beer. Yeah, just drink beer. Politics be damned. It's amazing. Hmm. Anything to add to this? This is a. Uh, Many people would consider Trappist beers to be the perfect expression of a beer and the beer making process. Anyone that makes beer will tell you that to make beer properly you really have you really have to be so very careful. You make it in your shed, in a bucket with some straws and stuff, and you make a lot of watery wheat beer. But as you get better at it, it is about the attention to detail, it's about keeping it all your little things hygienically clean and blah blah blah. Patience. And patience. More patience, yeah. Like doing anything correctly, and yet if you imagine these people talk about patience, yeah, exactly, you know, yeah. and they're not doing it. Well, maybe they are doing it for their own gratification, but a lot of it is down to maybe the religiousness of them, the piety, of their yeah. the, their own piety would help. I think that's a good point. Like, if you think that these guys just went into their their shed and they were thinking of a good recipe, and then they came up with one and were like, "Yeah, hey, this is it." No. They spent centuries coming up with this recipe. It wasn't just one man. It was like generations yes. of them coming up with it. Brewing it slowly and carefully. Yeah. And again, like any of these beers, um, there will be, we don't be talking about mass-produced factory beers. So if you wrote down, if you had a really good palate and you written all the flavor notes of this beer, within uh, two years, go back and review it again. The flavour notes will not be the same because the beer will not be the same. It's very, di it's very difficult to homogenise such a product, which again is what I, makes I, it brilliant. I, I don't think you should even try to. I think that's 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 where we're going a little bit wrong with a lot of the modern, um, the modern world, JP. To be well, honest, yeah, 
regulations and that kind of stuff because I mean there are certain things that sh should be left outside of that because it, it is you cannot put this into a category of like this is just this because it's a living thing anything with yeast is a living thing yes and you can't you can't just say that okay that's it this is what it's supposed to be you have to allow for the beauty of it is that it's it's a different experience every time yes it, it gets a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a natural product Anyway, yes, Trappist beers are a marvellous and wonderful thing, a wonderful expression of the art of beer making. Um, uh, to strive for the expertise and the attention to detail and to dedicate yourself to such a, to such a worthwhile thing, um, I would recommend everybody, I would recommend at least one of you, if you have any kids, donate your second child to a, to a monastery. So then it will keep the tradition alive. You know, because once the Holocaust comes, uh, and you know the um, the nuclear winter that's going to follow, it, um, people will again turn to to God and all that kind of jazz, and they will need these people will need your help. So please donate your second child to a monastery. That's brilliant. I think we're going to leave it at that. <laughs> you probably should. That's, no, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Excellent work. And if you don't stop and listen, I'll break out of this prison. Getting sick of waiting around. I'm getting sick of waiting around. I'm getting sick of waiting around.